Happy Friday! I was laying on the couch or the zero gravity chair and I was starting to doze off. I was started drifting off as my dad was talking. <laughs> and he was telling me all about Vietnam, what, it, what the country is like nowadays. And um, I don't think I could live there. In fact, I'm not even sure what I would like to go visit. <laughs> so my parents are from Vietnam and I was born in a refugee camp. 39 years ago, 40 years ago, and um, 79, so I guess it was 40 years ago. And um, we, I was in a refugee camp, that's where I was born, in a little island um, part of Indonesia called Tanjung Pinang. And I didn't know where that was, my dad pointed it out for me on the map. But today he was telling me all this wonderful stuff about Vietnam and what the country is like. And hey Gina, and I learned so much. I learned that when you live in a country that you don't have a lot of money, and there's, hey Kyle, if you're ever thinking about visiting Vietnam, here's the lowdown. <laughs> so the country is beautiful, and as far as like going out to the beaches and the oceans and stuff, but people do like throw trash and they throw fecal matter and stuff in the ocean, so that part's kind of gross. So I don't know which part of the ocean is a good place to, to visit. Maybe you should do some research or have a tour guide or have some local or something, you know, clue you in and stuff. But um, I don't know how easy it is to find jobs and it helps to, there's a lot of bribery. <laughs> like if you want to sue somebody, there's like bribery. If you're trying to get money for something, there's bribery. If you would like to, if you would like to, if you have a house and you don't have any money, you can actually take a, kind of like a pawn shop. Like you put a lien on the house and you borrow a little bit of the value of the house and you don't even need like, there just needs to be a document that says you were one of the people that lived in that house. Like you don't have to have the title of the house to like, hey Julie, um, my dad was telling me about Vietnam and I was just like, I don't think I could live there. Like, like you know, as Americans living in the country of America, the United States, like, you're so used to, like, laws and regulations. And, like, you know, I'm not saying that the United States is not corrupt. I'm not saying, like, there's no bribery, there's no, you know, order or anything like that. Like, you know, there, there are some gray areas, but like in Vietnam, it sounds like it's really gray. Like bribery is like a, a normal practice. And if, if you don't know the right people, you don't bribe, you don't like, then they might just say, uh, we're going to look into this. <laughs> like if you get in a car accident, oh, here's the weird part. This is the part that really shocked me was the value of a human life like it's not seen as very much so if you let's say if you get hit by uh if you get if you're if you're on the street and you're walking you get hit by a, a motorcyclist or something like the policeman might if you call the policeman they will come and fine you for like killing somebody like you don't get thrown in prison if you actually kill somebody with your i don't know if it's an accident or not but if you kill somebody with your motorcycle you don't get thrown in prison you, there's no legislation you don't go to court or something you get fined like a few hundred thousand dollars which is like 50 bucks or something in american dollars or, or not even like i think a million dollars is considered 50 bucks so you might get feel you get like fined like 20 bucks or something for like killing somebody like a pedestrian and i was just like oh my gosh hey april and i was just like oh my gosh like you hit somebody you kill them and you get fined like you get a slap on the wrist and it's just not a big deal. It's, it's just a different way of living. It's just like, the whole idea is so foreign to me. And I am, my dad is telling me the stuff. I'm like trying to wrap my head around the concepts. And, and I don't think, you know, once you live in America, hey Marie, and we're, we're used to like some sort of judicial system where we're, we're like, we we're you know, we have like basic human rights and stuff. Like to see like these kind of practices in a different country, you're just like, you're just perplexed because you don't you don't live that kind of life you don't live that kind of day so you don't really really know what it's like you know like he's trying he's telling me this stuff and I'm 
I'm having trouble like really imagining living there under those conditions where everything is a bribe, everything, there is no judicial system, you know, it's, I mean, it's a communist country, you know, and you may not see like the communism, but you might hear it, you might feel it by the way people speak and the way they view their lives and it was unique. It's definitely a unique thing. Like I remember when we were in, um, when we visited China back in 2005, 2005, so that was before the Olympics were in the Beijing, in Beijing, and I remember there were these beautiful vases that were made with, um, like you would dip them in paint and then you'd fire them, you'd dip, or, dip them in paint, you'd fire them, it was like enameled brass or something, it was gorgeous, but the woman, I remember that watching the workers when they were doing it, they were so mechanical, like they were so lifeless. And I thought, gosh, like they're working on this beautiful thing and they don't even see the beauty in their work because their life has no freedom. And I just, it just boggled me. And I, and I thought that was, it was something so strange for me to see, you know, and I was probably like 26 at that point in my life, you know, back in 2000 and 2005 and and it was so perplexing to me you know can you imagine and and they don't know any better like that's the life they've known just like the people that live in Vietnam like that's the life they know they know that there is hey Lisa there is no legal system bribery is a common practice human life is not valued and <laughs> and it just makes me think it makes me think like gosh like if we if we all lived our life like that where we didn't value the human life where we didn't have like some order or some system and that was just all we knew then to see something else was so foreign it was so foreign like i wonder if 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 the people in vietnam that's the way the life they live right and they come to the united states and they start living here they're like this is really weird like where's the bribery why is everything overpriced you know <laughs> like what do you mean i can't just beat somebody to death and not just get fined. I would go to prison for killing somebody? Like, can you imagine like if that was your value system? It's just it just blew my mind. It was just so out there. It was so foreign. And it's just a difference of did you grow up in this country or did you go grow up in a different country? You know, like when I was in Beijing, like the people were unhappy and they were direct and they were kind of impolite and they just didn't have a lot to live for. And you can just tell by the way they interact with you. They were just unhappy. Hey, Gerald. And it's just like, gosh, like, I just, it just, it just is beyond my comprehension to see that this is how human beings are living in certain countries. And it's just widely accepted that that's simply the way it is. It's just absolutely astounding, absolutely astounding. And it, it makes me grateful. You know, it makes me grateful of the country I do live in. It makes me grateful of my capabilities. You know, like if you live in the United States of America, you have the ability to earn money. You have the ability to apply for student loans. You have the ability to become an entrepreneur and you have the ability to generate money and income. And when with that in income and that money, you can actually use it to transform the world. You can use it to elevate humanity. You can use it to elevate our planet. You can use it to alleviate causes that you don't believe in. You know, like in, in another country, you might not even have that freedom because you don't even have a way to make money. Like <laughs> you couldn't just apply for a student loan, get educated and find a job and generate money. Like. There is not the infrastructure to support that way of being. It doesn't even support it. And it's just, it's, it's so foreign. So, I have a lot to be grateful for. And I hope that if you live in the United States or you live in a country where you have the ability to educate yourself, you have the ability to generate money, you have the ability to earn money and use that money for causes that are bigger than yourself and causes that are really meaningful that you're really grateful that you actually have that freedom because not all countries have that. And I really got that today. And it, it ain't so pretty, my friends. It ain't so pretty at all. <laughs> hey, Morvando. So, that's more of a story. 
you can choose to be grateful for all the blessings that you have and really see the beauty and the magnificence around you and really see your potential and your freedom to powerfully create the life you desire to live and to create movements and to use your energy to, to convert it into money that you can use it to transform the world and humanity and the planet. If you have that power, you actually are born in a life where you live in a country where you have the ability to do that, that says something about your soul. That says something about your life path. That says something about like how many lifetimes you lived and you know at what point did you earn the ability to live in a country where you actually have that freedom and that choice to create that kind of life and to generate that kind of money. It's just astounding, absolutely astounding. So that's all I have for you tonight. It is Friday. I am dead tired for some reason. I don't know. I even put on some makeup so I'd wake up. <laughs> But it is time to go to bed. It is 9.33. It is late, my friends. And I'm tired for some reason. But regardless, if you did not know, Wednesday is the fourth day of the week. Wednesday. Hey, over inertia. Wednesday is the day that I have my group coaching sessions. What are group coaching sessions? That is when I share with you a habit or a powerful concept where you can really live a, a powerful transformed life so i'll cover that for the first half hour on wednesdays at 8 p.m texas time and then the second half hour i'll do mini coaching sessions so um it's cheap the the week the monthly group coaching sessions is 48 dollars a month that's 12 dollars a week super duper cheap that's like lunch a meal um in the country of america anyways and not in Vietnam, because $12 is a lot more in Vietnam. <laughs> so um, you can join me for weekly coaching sessions on Wednesdays as a group. Um, I also have a money course I'm launching on the 4th of May for $44. 28 days of transforming your life with your relationship with energy of money. And I'm also collaborating with the creator of Neurodynamic Breathwork, Michael Stone. And I'll be teaching a relationship course every two weeks. Um, we haven't finalized some dates yet, but I think it's either going to be May 4th or Memorial Day weekend. But it's on a Saturday. It's, it's like 10 a.m. Central Time, Texas Time, and no, 12, 12 p.m. Noon or 10 a.m. Pacific Time, California Time. Hi, Ava. You want to say hi? Hi. You want to say hi? We're both ye wearing yellow today. Check out her watermelon outfit with matching pants and shirt. Daddy. Wanna hi? Daddy. Oh, what is this, Ava? What's this? It's a cat. It's a cat. Hello, kitty. And what do we have here? We have some hair decorations. Right, Ava? And she smells like pineapple because she's ate some pineapple. Here you go. You want that? So, I send you love, light, profound clarity, infinite possibility to create the life you desire to live. One that is aligned with your soul's expansion purpose and growth always. Always. Oh, she wants to show you her Hello Kitty case. Hello Kitty. So, it has these compartments in here that you can put your hair accessories in. And, uh, you want to stand here? She's ready to go to bed, too. So... Let's say goodnight, Ava. Can you say bye? Bye. 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 Okay, good night. Here's you living a soul elevated life. We'll see you manana tomorrow. Bye-bye.